Hello, I'm Annette McFarlane. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm talking about seed sowing. Seeds are a really economical way to get new plants because you can often get quite a lot in a small pack and once you learn a few tips and tricks you'll be having great success with germination. So a few basics to start with. You might be one of those people that saves your own seed and I'll be talking about that in another session or you might be buying packs of seed from your local retailer. One thing to look at is the use by date on the seeds because often what can happen is we buy seeds, they're very tempting and particularly if we buy them online, pop them in a box and suddenly we find they're out of date. So seeds have usually a two year lifespan from when they're packed and the date is always listed somewhere on the pack itself, usually down the bottom. So you can tell when the seeds basically expire. Now, that doesn't mean that the seeds won't grow, it just means that you'll have a much lower rate of germination. So sometimes things like tomatoes or many of the annual plants that we grow, the flowers that we grow, um, will still germinate long after the expiry date is up. But some things are very sensitive and things like onions, uh, parsnips, sweet corn, you'll find that if the seeds go just out of date, the germination rate will drop by up to 50% and the longer you leave it the less germination you'll get. So check the use by date and make sure when you buy seeds that you plan to use them within that season or at least within the next two years and always store them in a container um, in a cool place out of sunlight. So I store mine in sealed containers and usually I store them in the bottom of the fridge. In terms of sowing your seeds, we really have to pay attention to the detail of sowing seeds to begin with. Some seeds are really easy, but if you want to get onto things that are more, dif are more difficult, it's really best to know the basics. So your containers, whatever you use, should be nice and clean. No need to scrub them, you can use recycled containers. You just have to either wash them in warm, soapy water, or um, I put mine just in some disinfectant and household disinfectant and soak them for about 20 minutes then I'll just take them out and let them dry. If you're sowing seed direct into the garden bed that's fine too. It's really just a matter of what you're going to do with the seeds and also what the seeds preference is really. So some seeds like to be sown direct because they don't like to be transplanted and that includes crops like carrots uh, and peas and beans, well you can sow them direct too because it's pretty easy, the seeds are large and the same with things like sweet corn. But in, even in that case, if you've got a problem perhaps with mice or rats or other things attacking your garden, if you put your seeds in containers and then transfer them into the garden, you've got much better control about the conditions um, that you put those seeds under. The other thing to remember is that seeds are seasonal. And so the season that the plant grows in and the temperatures that it likes determine the temperature that that seed likes to actually germinate. So for example, if you're growing capsicums or even uh, eggplants, they tend to like slightly warmer temperatures for the seed to germinate. And so if you try to sow them in the middle of winter where it's really cold, they just don't come up or they'll come up very, very slowly. Um, some seeds really like those cool conditions and they're the things that typically grow through the winter time like cabbages and kale and broccoli, those types of things like cooler temperatures. So if you try to sow them and get a crop in too early while the temperatures are still warm, chances are again that those seeds won't come up. So pay attention to the information on the back of the pack or read up, follow my um, sowing guide on the website particularly for vegetables to see when is the best time to put your seeds in. Now when I prepare my seeds for sowing um, I do a couple of things with large seeds or seeds that are a bit corky or slow to germinate I'll often soak them in a, a mix of seaweed so here I have seaweed mixed at 20 mils per litre and I simply do this at night before I go to bed I put the seeds into a container any sort of container will do put a label in with the name and the variety and then I just simply pour some liquid seaweed into the container and leave them overnight so make sure you do this 
when you're going to sow the seeds the next day. So you leave them soak for about 12 hours, but you don't want to leave them for too much more than that because otherwise your seeds can rot. But it's a terrific technique to get beetroot going, um, spinach, it's also good for flowers like calendulas, tomatoes, eggplants, those things that take a while for the um, seeds to absorb moisture. And that's really the key with getting seeds to germinate successfully. Uh, because getting moisture into the seed is the thing that initiates germination and encourages your seed to grow. When it comes to then sowing the seed, um, I use uh, particular mixes. My preferred mix is the one that we use generally in commercial horticulture and it looks something like this. So you might have seen a mix that has sort of white pieces in it uh, and some people think that oh it's got uh, polystyrene or something in it. It hasn't. This is actually a mix of this coir, so this is coconut fibre. You soak this block in a bucket of water and it becomes a really fine mixture. Very good at holding moisture but it's also a very clean mix and that's quite important for your seed sowing. The white material is this here and this is perlite so perlite is another um, rock it's a natural material it's very very light but it also holds some moisture too so generally what I use is this combination and in commercial horticulture often that's the sort of thing that we, we use. When it comes to covering the seed we use another product and that's this one here and this is called vermiculite. So vermiculite again it's another natural product very light holds lots of moisture and so that means that your seeds don't dry out quite as quickly. You can use all sorts of materials for seed sowing. If you're using potting mix the only thing I would say is make sure you sieve the potting mix so that you're only getting fine material and not all those big bark chunks. Uh, those chunks tend to inhibit the growth of the seed when the tap root is coming out from the seed and also the big chunks mean that the potting mix dries out too quickly for your seeds to germinate successfully. You can use sieved compost, some people use just uh, washed river sand, so just use whatever you've got available and what you find successful for you. Now if I was sowing these seeds direct into a garden bed I would put a nice fine tilth to the soil that is take some of the soil um, once I'd cultivated the soil up and prepared it and then shake some of that sieved soil over the top to prepare my seed bed and all I'd have to do then is pour this mix along complete with the liquid seaweed in a line and pop the label in and then I can cover it because I don't want the seed to dry out then I can cover it with either more of the sieved mix I could cover it with coir or if you've got the miculite you can put that onto the garden as well or you could use sieved compost or again you could use sand. Um, if I was sowing these into containers then all I need to do is to drain that out a little and then I can put some of that seed into the container that I'm using and sometimes I'll just use, oh there's the label itself, just use that to sprinkle it over the, the seed and move it out over the pot. So again I filled this one with potting mix. So the seed is quite large and chunky so I'm just spreading that out. You can have a couple of pots there, pop your ladle label in and then I would just sprinkle a little bit of this over the top that vermiculite and then when I water that the vermiculite will expand and cover the seed just nicely uh, and I can then use the liquid seaweed to water over the top those seeds will be up in three or four days and you end up with something that looks a bit like this these are actually tomatoes that I did about five days ago but there are instances where certain seeds don't like to be covered and that particularly applies to really small seeds. So lettuce seed and begonia seed, for example, is really, really tiny. So it actually doesn't like to be covered with anything at all. And that's often a mistake that you know gardeners make at home when they're trying to get these seeds to germinate because all you ever see on the television is people making a great big drill in the soil and burying the seeds really deeply. So remember that Small seeds only have a limited amount of energy and so if we want to get them to germinate 
we just take a small amount of the seed. So here I've got um, an Asian lettuce. Um, Asian or lettuce seed will be either white or black, depending on the variety. This Asian lettuce is, is black. We just sprinkle a few seeds over the top. So there's probably about eight seeds there. Um, I can thin them out later on, but I like to plant my lettuces in bunches. Pop our label in here and I've got a whole tray there ready and I'm just going to share those with people and I can pop them in my own garden just burying the whole pot itself because these are biodegradable um, paper pots so they'll just decompose in the soil. So when it comes to seed sowing it's really easy uh, but it's also addictive and you'll end up probably with more seeds than you ever know what to do with and certainly like me more germinated seedlings um, when you get to this stage uh, i'll be showing you in our next session how you take it from here but get into seeds you'll have lots to share with family and friends and it's great fun